Hey, what is up everybody? It's Zach, Tennis Pro Doc, helping you improve your game and gear with science. And today I have a head-to-head -head battle of three head radical 2021 frames, the S, Mid Plus, and the Pro. We're gonna see which one of these three frames, if any, is worth switching to. Here we go. On the side-by-side -side test comparing average ground stroke speed on forehands and backhands, on the Pro I came in at 64.3 miles per hour, on the Mid Plus 63 miles per hour, on the S actually also 63 miles per hour. The only caveat I'll say though is the S was just a lot harder to control and took much more concentration to keep the ball on the court at those speeds versus the other two rackets where I was just swinging really freely with a lot of confidence during the test. On the serve test, I had an average flat serve speed of 94 miles per hour on the Radical Pro, 92.1 miles per hour on the Mid Plus, and only 87.3 miles per hour on the Radical S. But again, not due to lack of access to speed or power, just lack of control, which was really making me tense up when serving with it, and I think that's what really drove down the miles per hour. And on second serves, the Radical Pro came in at 79 miles per hour, the Radical Mid Plus at 77.3 miles per hour, and the S at 77 miles per hour, which statistically was the same as the Mid Plus. And I think that was just because once I could use the huge spin potential of the Radical S, I felt much more liberated to swing freely and really open my shoulders up, and thus I got it to perform in the same class as the other two. But overall on serves, I will say I noticed the Radical Pro above the other two just felt like I was pointing and shooting. The accuracy of that racket when serving was just out of this world. Had enough pocketing and feel where I could just pick a spot and more than enough spin to help me get shallower angles, but also enough mass to really pummel my flat serve when I wanted to. For me, the Pro was just an all around ideal serving racket in my hands. Not the fastest serves I've hit this year, that actually goes to the Onyx E-Zone, but just so many tools you have to choose from with the Pro when you're serving. And on the kick serve height test measuring spin potential, I got an average of 146 centimeters of kick serve height on both the Radical Pro and Mid Plus, which was some of my highest readings this year, but only 137 centimeters on the Radical S. The S is just so light that the ball wasn't hitting its maximum height at the baseline where I take my readings from. It was more kicking up shallower in the court just due to lack of weight I was getting on the ball. But I think with some mass added to that racket, I think it would have actually blown away both these other frames in terms of spin potential. On the suicide test, just checking out the racket's maneuverability characteristics. As you can see here on the Pro, really easy to maneuver the racket through the court, even taking full cuts from the forecourt, really easy. I think that's because the racket is 6.10 light, really kind of makes up for that high swing weight of 330. But with that high swing weight, it was still really easy to get enough power on the ball, even when hitting off my back foot moving backwards. Now the swing weight of 326 and it's only being four points head light, the mid plus was really nimble and maneuverable from the baseline, just not really in transition, a little bit more cumbersome. And when moving backwards, I have to say, I did notice I had to swing quite a bit harder on the mid plus than in the pro to get any power. So I will say this racket does not give you as much power moving backwards. Now on the Radical S, a little bit of a different story. Had to put a ton of spin on the ball to keep it down. Moving into the forecourt, as you can see, my arm is really close to my chest. I'm really having to take smaller swings at the ball. Now moving backwards, the racket, just a little bit over 10 ounces strong. I had to swing pretty hard off my back foot to get the ball to go anywhere. So not a lot of mass coming through the ball there. So on the play test, starting with the Radical Mid Plus, I did find that it played similar to the Extreme Mid Plus, just with a bit more feel and pocketing. Now it does have access to good pace, however it isn't a very hardy frame, so I did have to give the ball some oomph to really push my opponent back. But what I did like was the easy spin I got from the Radical, as well as the control from the baseline, making it, you know, for me, a nice option if you like the spin of the Extreme, but just want more feel from the baseline. And as you can see here, my dad, who actually hits a pretty flat one-hander, even he was able to use the MP spin to hit some really acute angles on his one-handed backhand. But on the other side of that, I have to say this racket did not absorb pace as well as some other frames in its class. I found that if my opponent got head in the point, it was just hard to return pace, and that I was really wishing for some lead tape at times just to give myself some more mass to help me out when I was getting pushed around. But unlike other light rackets out there, the Mid Plus did deliver decent weight of shot. Not the most hefty ball I've ever hit, but for the mass of the racket, the weight of shot was actually surprising. And up at net, the Mid Plus is solid. It's not the most nimble frame up there when you're volleying. However, I certainly could stick volleys with some degree of control. However, on my slice, I would say that I really had to focus on my slice 
flight path to get this frame to give me any stick at all on my slice shots. I found a bunch were kind of sailing on me, whereas on other frames I could do some more interesting things with my slices in the Extreme Tour or the Pro Staff, like adding some side spin or surprise drop shots, you're getting those really acute angles. In the Mid Plus, the only thing I could really do with consistency was try to drive my slice. So for that, I was left kind of wanting a little more. And those difficulties with slice as well as was borne out in the suicide test just shows this racket is really nimble from the baseline. Just once you start getting into transition tennis, that's when this racket starts leaving you with something to be desired. Now returning serve in the mid plus was a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde experience. I felt if I was able to get on top of a serve return, the mid plus was awesome. I felt like I could really pick targets, but on first serve returns, again, I was just wanting a little bit more of a solid hoop to control that pace. Now the Head Radical Pro 2021 was a completely different experience. Just check out the difference in sound between the mid plus and the pro here. That difference in sound is just a microcosm of all the differences between those two frames. Now I try not to get too excited about individual products on this channel because I like to stay as objective as possible, but I will say the Radical Pro was the most fun racket that I have played with in recent memory. Now with that being said, the Radical Pro did not have the pace or energy absorptive capabilities that the RF97 had or even that the Extreme Tour had, but what this frame had that those didn't was its creativity or ease of creativity. I haven't played with a frame before that offered me as many options on the court, whereas some frames are good from the baseline or there's better transitioning or up at net. The Pro just felt nimble and forgiving just from everywhere, and just the only complaint I had was that when dealing with a lot of pace, the Pro could be less absorptive than I would have liked. Now the spin potential of the Pro is surprisingly good. I wasn't expecting much spin just looking at the string bed density or overall construction of the frame, but sure enough, wherever I was on court, I could usually get enough English on the ball to bring it down where I wanted it. Now up at net, the Pro was really maneuverable. I feel like I had some nice touch with this racket. Harder hit balls were just a tad harder to control versus heavier frames, but otherwise a really good volleying frame. And on sliced backhands, the Pro was just a 180 from the mid plus, giving me just a ton of options from driving to carving, even to drop shot. Now serve returns on the Pro for me were uber consistent. Number one, because on most first serve returns, I chip the ball back. I just try to get it deep down the middle. Second serve returns, as long as it wasn't a really heavy second serve, I was usually able to track down and hit it back with some good accuracy. However, I found on really hard hit second serves or second serves that were driving me back, as my racket started coming back further, the racket just became less absorptive and less forgiving as I was trying to hit the ball behind me. Now the Radical S was quite a bit of a different experience than the Mid Plus and the Pro. Now even though this racket is four points headlight strong, just like the Mid Plus, it comes in at a gentlemanly 102 square inches and only 10.2 ounces strong, which makes this racket just a little difficult to control from the baseline and the midcourt, unless you have a real Nadal style buggy whip, which when I went to that style swing, I actually had some luck with this racket, but even then it was really hard to control the depth because once I started hitting across my body, again, the ball would start to sail long, and when I would really whip through the ball with that buggy whip style with a lot of spin, my shots would just start to land short and high, and they were really getting pummeled, and I wasn't getting much weight of shot on those. Ironically enough though, this racket was actually really nice to play with up at net. I actually liked playing with it up at net more than I liked it anywhere else on the court, but slice backhands, again, just really hard to control, unless I really shortened up my stroke and only, only focused on bunting the ball back. And these characteristics really translated to return of serve too, where anything with pace was pretty hard to control unless I was just chipping with a really strong grip. And that just kind of sums up the racket in general. I was just having to concentrate so much on keeping the ball in the court with this racket. It was really hard for me to enjoy playing with it or really kind of hit out and play my game with it. Now there are a lot of similarities with these rackets. They're all pretty light for their respective class. They're all really comfortable on your arm and all are really easy to get spin with. And frankly, all three are just a little bit less absorbed of a pace than some of their competitors. The differences between these three frames really come in their control and weight of shot. The S having a lot of trouble with control and delivering less weight of shot, the mid plus giving good control and pace from the back of the court, and the pro being sort of the all court racket allowing for easy creativity, pace and control from just about anywhere. And if I had to describe these three frames in one word, the S would be bulbous, the mid plus would be nostalgic, and the pro would be creative. 
PS is just a lot of racket to play with. It does give you a lot back in terms of energy, but it's just really difficult to control if you have a full swing. And I think the player's best suited for that is either the doubles player with short compact strokes or the player that needs a bigger hoop and a lighter frame and hits with more of those short strokes, but is still looking for spin. Other than that, a player who can provide their own pace and weight won't find much usefulness in that frame. Now for me, playing in the Radical just felt really nostalgic like I was playing with one of my old Radicals in that it really performs well from the baseline, but then it just gets a little less useful as you move up in the court. And I think players who really like to stalk the back of the court and who play longer rallies will really like this frame for its comfort and spin, but also its ability to really pack a punch when you want to. From the back of the court, it's just hard to miss with it. It has a lot, a lot of control from the baseline. But if you are more of a transition or all-court player, there are just better rackets out there. And the pro is just really easy to create points with. And by that, I mean it's really easy to create spin, weight of shot, angles. It's a great player's racket if you want the precision of a player's frame, but want just more comfort and forgiveness. The racket is just so easy to get through the air. And no matter where you are on the court, and the options it gives you with its weight of shot plus spin potential, this really allows you to open up the court in ways those other two frames don't. And for that, the best players for it have to be the all quarters or even big servers with the amount of accuracy this frame delivers is just staggering, both from the baseline, the midcourt, but also serving and up at net. Now, if I were going to buy one of these three rackets, what would I do to customize them? Well, with the S, I would definitely be trying to dampen the handle a little bit and just add more mass just to get more weight of shot, just so that with that buggy whip style, I could actually move the ball in the court more. And on the mid plus, I'd be adding lead to three and nine at the hoop, exactly like I did on my old flex point radical that I played with all through college, just to give this racket a little bit more mass, a little more weight of shot, and just allow it to absorb pace a little bit better from the baseline, mid court, and up at net. And on the Radical Pro, it'd also be putting lead at three and nine at the hoop. I think it'd also be putting leather grip on it just to kind of balance it out. This racket actually, to me, is weighted and balanced pretty well. I just would like a little bit more energy or pace absorption capability of it. And I just even to get it up to the level of the Extreme Tour, I think if I could do that, I really think this would be just an ideal player's racket. By the way, if you do want to see the Extreme Tour play test, see what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link in the description to that video. All right, well, these rackets are a pretty hot item right now. They're being play tested a lot. People are kind of considering switching to them from the old Radical lines. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about them. Do you want to try them? Have you tried them yet? Have they met your expectations or maybe not so much? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of them. Otherwise, hope you all have a great day, great night, wherever in the world you are tuning in from. I'll see you in the next video.